I first have an update from the Malibu media hearing that we heard about in, the, in my latest video, where Malibu media's proprietor, Colette Pellissier, or Colette Pellissier, had been facing a arrest order or arrest warrant, which was suspended, which means it's like on hold, and the judge ordered them to appear for a hearing on the 22nd, October 22nd, a Friday. I called in and attended the hearing and I live tweeted sort of a, a live report on the hearing because you're not allowed to record the hearing. There was another company, Zio Digital, who is owned by Brigham Field, who happens to be Colette's husband. And so there's some kind of close family relationship there. The problem is Malibu Media is an LLC, Zio Digital is an LLC. And LLCs are not allowed to be represented by their proprietors, by their owners. You can't pro se without an attorney go into court and represent the interests of the LLC. So the story is that William Mullins, the defendant, was sued by Malibu allegedly for copyright infringement that occurred on his internet connection, allegedly that he's the infringer but somehow they did not follow through with prosecuting this action and the defendant won and in the process the defendant won a judgment in their favor of i think forty two thousand dollars something something in that area and then the defense team visited upon malibu media the required paperwork to get the money from this judgment to find assets, to ask for money to be withheld so that the judgment can be paid, to ask for bank account information and balances and things like that. And they did this all through a lawful discovery process. And apparently Malibu Media and Colette Pellissier ignored these requests or, or otherwise did not turn over the information and the money. And so the judge granted a uh, similar attachment order to EPIC. E-P-O-C-H is, EPIC is a payment processor for these kinds of entertainment companies because I guess any one of them can't be trusted with a credit card processing account. <laughs> so EPIC apparently processes the credit card payments and sends the money on kind of like any other payment processor would, but, but EPIC's the one whose who's butt's on the line for chargebacks and things like that. So getting up to the hearing the judge wanted to know why malibu media and colette pellissier hasn't responded properly so the judge ordered her to appear in court but remotely by telephone and if she didn't appear she would have been issued an arrest warrant and i guess eventually someone would have gotten around to arresting her i don't know how fast that would have happened but there would have been an arrest warrant. The judge called it a body attachment order, which I thought was a cool name for it that I haven't heard before. You normally, you normally attach to property. Now you're going to attach to the body of a person. Legally attach, as in there's an arrest warrant. So the judge calls the hearing. There were several hearings before. It started a little bit late. The judge calls the hearing, asks everyone who's present. And of course, Colette and Brigham Field are both present but without attorneys. The judge had more or less ordered or through his order had strongly suggested that they need attorneys to represent the LLCs and they should have attorneys to respond or object to the court's decision and, and, and the defense counsel's requests. And they showed up, but without attorneys. And they begin sort of discussing this and the judge asks Colette to speak about what's going on. And Colette starts and tries to explain that she's having cash flow issues because of all this. Epic, I guess, was their one major payment processor. I don't think that was discussed, but it seems like she's having such cash flow problems that maybe there's no direct payments to them and it's all going through Epic or something. So she begins speaking and she's obviously anxious and it seems to be that she's flustered. Her speech is starting to get faster and faster and faster. And the court reporter asks her to slow down because the court reporter can't keep up. So she has to like take a moment, catch her breath and start over again. 
but she says that this is all basically um, contributing to the downfall of, of Malibu Media, the LLC, and that they have no cash flow, they can't use their no cash flow to hire an attorney, nobody wants to work for them without being paid, and then of course if, if I add in there, I chime in in my internal monologue, of course, because I'm not going to interrupt the court hearing, that if they hadn't done all of this shenaniganery with not paying their attorneys and fighting with their attorneys and fighting with their investors. They're apparently being sued in California court as well for some kind of uh, contract dispute with their investors, which I'm assuming is not paying their investors. They would, they would have no trouble hiring an attorney to attend these hearings and defend this case. So she tries to blame it all on the lack of cash flow and even says that this is stressing out their marriage and they're on the verge of divorce and that they can't pay their web hosting providers and that the web hosts are about to turn off their web hosting for xart.com and for uh, whatever Zeo Digital is. I don't, I don't even know. So the hearing continues. Brigham Field speaks next. It was really funny because Brigham Field immediately said that Zeo Digital is an affiliate of Malibu Media, whereas Colette had testified that Zeo Digital was not an affiliate of Malibu Media and didn't explain why Zeo Digital was receiving the proceeds from Malibu's XART account. I don't, you know, why would you, why would you redirect the payments from the primary entity to a secondary entity for any lawful purpose? If you owed one entity the money from, it would go to the primary entity and then you would transfer it yourself and make like a, you'd make like a, a check, a, a corporate check would be drawn and, and written and, and sent to Zeo Digital. No, it sounds an awful lot like Zeo Digital is getting the proceeds as an attempt to hide the assets or protect the assets from the judgment creditor, William Mullins. So then... Defense counsel, Mullen's defense counsel speaks and says, basically this all represents, confirms that Colette Pellissier and Brigham Field don't understand the law, that they need to get an attorney to represent the LLCs. He doesn't, he, does, he sort of implies, but doesn't say things that definitely like all exploded in my head like well if you had kept some of the money you could pay the attorneys and then they'd be able to represent you but somehow these business owners with uh, six digits at least probably seven digits of revenue uh, didn't save any money for paying the attorneys to defend them in one of the lawsuit cases that they prosecuted it, it felt an awful lot like colette and field were saying that this was happening to them when that completely overlooks that they've been the plaintiff in 8,900 lawsuits as Malibu Media LLC prosecuted all these copyright infringement lawsuits. And then so when one of the copyright infringement lawsuits goes wrong, suddenly they have no money to properly handle the defense now that they've been put on the defensive by the defendant who is now on the offense and trying to collect this judgment. So the defense counsel notes that the $42,000 judgment plus interest has now accru accrued to $52,000, that Epic has withheld something like $40,000, $45,000, and that sometime in November they expect Epic will have paid directly to the defendant thanks to the attachment Hang on, I've got to turn, I forgot to turn off my, my sound on my phone. So the defense counsel next represents that Epic will have paid the remainder of the judgment, something like $45,000 now, and, and by the middle of November, they expect to have the $52,000 judgment satisfied, which would then remove the court's jurisdiction over the attachment to the money because the judgment will have been paid. But there's more money that needs to be paid, but it's not in the order. So now defense counsel has to make a motion or a request for a pre-judgment attachment, basically a security deposit on the now expected attorney's fees, because somehow the $42,000 wasn't the attorney's fees, it was a judgment against Malibu. 
I've got to figure that one out. I haven't figured that out yet. I'll, I'll, I'll ask defense counsel when I speak to them next week. So the pre-judgment attachment order would continue requiring Epic or, or Malibu to pay money to the defense until the attorney's fees judgment was satisfied. Or maybe it'll be paid to the court. The court will hold it in escrow. Something like that. So that's due on November 5th. There's another hearing scheduled on November 22nd. And the judge lets everybody go, which to me says that the judge was not going to implement the arrest order. Isn't arrest water? Arrest warrant order? You get it? Yeah. That the judge wasn't going to implement or take the arrest order off of suspension. However, I don't think the judge vacated the suspended arrest order, so I think it's still in place and it's suspended. So there's this looming threat of arrest if she doesn't continue to cooperate in the case. And that's where the judge left it. The judge seemed to be quite happy that everyone showed up and that was really all the arrest order was supposed to do. So it got everybody to show up and, and now we got to hear Colette and her shaky voice on the, uh, on the hearing call talk about how she's losing her business. Couldn't have happened to a nicer person. Someone who pursues these piracy lawsuits, demands large fees for defend from defendants, and really has, has ruined some lives over the past eight, nine years that they were filing the things. I can attest to, as some of my clients have gotten divorced, some of my clients have um, had mental health issues, anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, all because they were taken to court for thousands and thousands of dollars for allegedly pirating a couple videos or more than a couple videos from XArt. It'd be one thing if the penalty was lower. I, I'm definitely okay as a defense counsel. I'm definitely okay with actual pirates, actual infringers having to pay something. But I think the $2,250 number from Michael Bailson in the Eastern District of Pennsylvania is too high for any one act of online file sharing infringement. We're not talking about people who shared with a profit motive. We're talking about people who wanted to get an adult video for free. Sometimes it's people who didn't want to pay for it, because it's easier to get it for free, which is kind of the worst kind of, of this kind of infringement. Sometimes it's people who were afraid to put their payment on a credit card. Their finances are, you know, a family affair. So if they pay for xart.com or epic.com, the person who reviews the finances, the spouse is going to look at the finances and be like, what's this? What's epic.com? Who's buying videos from adult entertainment companies? And I get it. Some people want to hide it from their spouse. Some people just don't want to pay for it. So yeah, there's been some kind of damage done, but certainly not $2,250 per video plus attorney's fees. So I have mixed feelings about pursuing infringers in the way the law currently allows infringers to be pursued. I don't think that suing an internet subscriber is a plausible way to identify one particular infringer. I think it's possible, but possible does not rise to the level of a sufficient pleading under Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 8, and the plaintiff should not be able to maintain these lawsuits without doing something more to identify the infringers. Or a teenage child is doing it, uh, or a neighbor, someone who has access to the Wi-Fi nearby. Um, lots of those cases have happened, and you get a mixed bag of defendants, some of whom are completely innocent but don't want to defend themselves because that would require them in some way to communicate with either the court system or the adult entertainment company. It's baffling to me that a company like Malibu Media could make so much money off. Of, we don't know how much. I, I can't talk about how much. I can't talk about what I know because they are confidential settlements. 
but we can definitely estimate that they made lots of money, probably into the seven digits. They filed 8,900 lawsuits in eight, nine years or less, and the majority of them settled in some way. So if we just take 8,900 times even a thousand dollars, which I think is low considering that they file for more than one infringement. If I do 8,900 times 1,000, that's still $9 million. So they made some kind of seven digit figure, possibly more, possibly less. I really don't know. And I'm dancing on the edge of talking about confidential information. So I'm not going to go any further there. So yeah, that's what's happening with Malibu Media and Colette Pellissier's arrest warrant. Couldn't happen to a nicer person. Totally deserved, 100%. She deserves to lose the case, the money. I, she should have managed her business better. I, I really can't imagine not having a legal defense fund or legal offense fund for such a effort. If you're going to make the lawsuits part of your primary business revenue, then it has to operate like a business and you have to have adequate funds or assets for the expected operations of the business. Usually then plus, you don't want to be walking razor thin margins on these things and have all the money going out that's coming in. You want to have something as a buffer in case something happens, like a defendant is innocent or you can't prove it and the defendant wins and then you owe them money. You want to be able to pay that money and move on with your lawsuit system. My version, my short version to say what happened is that she had a golden goose and she got too hungry and ate the golden goose instead of allowing it to continue to lay golden eggs. And that's our show. Thank you for watching. Special thanks to our top supporters in October. John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Spirit Bear, Benjamin Hightoff, Ugly Grill, Torpedon, Shadow Tycho, Earthbound Star, Pure Magma, Drew Hart, Tech Tech Potato, and Eric Tams. You can support Lawful Masses on Patreon.com slash LJ French and Sponsus.com slash Law or through YouTube memberships and through Floatplane subscriptions. Join me for our weekly live production stream on twitch.tv slash lawful masses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. I hope everyone has a great week. I love you all. Bye.